I need a disc sander, which is kind of a bummer since I don't have a disc sander. Ever since inheriting my uncle's lathe, I've been obsessed with using it whenever I can. If you have a lathe, I'm pretty sure you understand what I mean. I've used it for so many projects already, but I haven't stopped thinking about the lathe as essentially a really versatile motor that can be used to make other tools. So today, I'm going to show you how I built this disc sander with just about a quarter sheet of half inch plywood. So for around $18 in materials, you can make this lathe disc sander too. So far I've been breaking down my quarter sheet of plywood for the parts. If you're interested in specific dimensions, I've left a link in the description below to a set of really affordable plans for a 12 inch version. If you want to make a different size sander, you can scale down the dimensions I put together, or really the construction is simple enough to use this as inspiration. The last cut before assembly is for the notch in the table. This notch creates a little peninsula around the left side of the disc for extra workpiece support. A couple of things to mention about this. First, I raised the blade to maximum height so the blade is as vertical as it can be at the table. It won't ever get fully vertical, but a tall blade height will make the final cut with a handsaw much quicker. Second, I hold the workpiece while I stop the machine. I don't want to draw the wood back on these long cuts because it could cause kickback. Once the blade is stopped, I can draw the wood back to make the smaller notch cuts. For these, I'm not worried about reversing the feed. The cuts are just a couple inches long, so the blade isn't buried enough to cause kickback. I just needed to do a quick touch up with a handsaw, then I could glue together the table and disc parts. I decided on a lamination for these two parts to guarantee flatness. Half inch plywood is a bit thin to stay perfectly flat on its own, but two pieces laminated together have that rigidity. After letting the pieces dry overnight, I cleaned up the edges of the disc blank and the table. For the disc, I need to cut a perfect 12 inch circle. I measured and marked the center of my disc blank to prepare for cutting the circle. My method of choice for circles this large is with a router and a circle cutting jig. I do have this fancy circle cutting jig that requires me to completely disassemble my edge guide, so I decided to just whip up a simple one instead. After marking the center line on a piece of plywood, I used my router's fixed base to mark for a couple holes that I could use to attach the two. I drilled slightly oversized holes to accept the screws, then mated the plywood to the base. With everything working, I remounted the jig onto my plunge base. Then using this quarter inch spiral upcut bit, I plunged a hole through the plywood jig. I unplugged the router before touching the bit, then measured six inches from the nearest edge of the bit for the circle's radius. I drilled a 3 32 inch hole at that six inch mark, then drilled the center of the disc blank with the same drill bit. I popped a nail into the holes I just drilled, then began plunging my router a quarter inch at a time to make a circle. Unfortunately, the nail wasn't as snug as I wanted, so after one pass, I switched my pivot pin to the drill bit I used to drill the holes. For this last pass, I recommend using a backer board. Ah, satisfying. With the disc freed from the rest of the blank, I cut the waste piece at the table saw to just under the height of the box parts. I'm going to use this semicircle as a shroud for the disc to contain the sawdust. Here you can see how I'll mount the shroud under the disc. I attached it to the base with screws using a clamp as a third hand. With the shroud attached to the base, I started to attach the rest of the box. My only note here is to make sure everything's square. The tabletop will rest on this box, so it's important to have good alignment at this point. Then I marked and drilled the front of the box. Unfortunately, I lost my footage of me attaching the front, but it just screws on like the rest of the parts. 
To finish up the box, I needed to drill a vacuum port and add a mounting lock that secures the box to the lathe. My vacuum hose is one and a quarter inches in diameter, and I realized I don't have a drill bit that size. So I made it work with a smaller bit, a jigsaw, and a rotary sanding drum on my Dremel. And you can see how happy I am that I got a good fit. With a vacuum port, I moved on to the locking mechanism. I started by cutting a block that fit perfectly between the rails on the lathe, then attached that to the bottom of the box. On the lathe, I drilled for a hold down bolt and slid on another block with a slightly oversized hole and screwed on the hold down knob. The box was now secured to the lathe bed, so I moved on to finishing up the disc. Remember that center hole I drilled for the circle jig? That came in handy when I was mounting the faceplate. I used my lathe's spur drive in the center hole, then slipped the faceplate over it. It was a little loose though, so I used some electrical tape to shim the spur drive. With a snug fit, I marked and drilled for the mounting screws. And I had to do a quick test drive. The edges were a bit out of round, probably due to the nail I used before. So a quick touch up with a roughing gouge was necessary. The face was really flat though and didn't require any touch up. Once the disc was completely round, I double checked the fit of the box, no issues. The last step of assembly was to attach the table. Until now, I've left the table off because I've been contemplating how I'd get it square and flat. Using blue tape as a shim and a walnut wedge, I mounted the table to the box completely square to the disc. I secured it with four screws, and this wouldn't be a Bike City project without at least one screw up, so here's six holes for four screws. Once the table was mounted, the sander was complete. I just faced off the edge of the table for an even gap, then started making some wood dust. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and subscribing to my channel for more. And again, if you'd like a set of plans for this sander, I've left a link in the description below. Thanks again, and see you next time on the Bike City Woodworks channel.